Hi guys, uh, what we're going to talk about tonight is chapter two, which is your digital marketing framework. Um, so let me uh, bring the uh, deck over here, and I am also going to go to the desktop as well. So let me do that now. Okay, and I'm going to bring the deck over here. And let's get this in PowerPoint mode, and let's talk about um, the topics here in Chapter Two. Uh, fairly high-level stuff. Okay, again, let's just let's just make sure we all know kind of the definition of what marketing is: integrated marketing, and then specifically digital marketing within the integrated marketing uh, plan. Okay, marketing, again, uh, is the process of communicating the value of a product or service to customers. Um, marketing might sometimes be interpreted as the art of selling products or services, but again, keep in mind that's only a small part of what marketing is. Uh, marketing may replace the word advertising um, as well. The Marketing American Association defines marketing as the activity, set of institutions, and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. So it's really everything and anything that comes together to create the product or service offering on behalf of the customer and, and what all is entailed in that. Um, we'll, we'll dive in a second here into uh, kind of how some others have defined it. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So the Chief Marketing Officer of Bizarre Voice defines it as marketing encompasses activities that maximize the value of the customer and return on investment when bringing a product or service uh, to market. Um, so again, pretty high level, you know, what are those activities exactly, um, what one could ask. Um, uh, Jesse Friedman, um, a prof at Johnson and Wales University, defines it as marketing is developing trust between a consumer and a product. Um, great marketing is developing trust between a consumer and a product without the consumer even knowing it happened. Um, again, I think it's a little broader than that, but I certainly think that is a major component, is you've got to have that trust, you've got to be transparent, um, be forthright as a brand, especially in this digital world. Um, Chief Marketing Officer at Hague Group, uh, David uh, Heckler, Hackleroid, uh, defined it as to identify, acquire, and retain higher margin clients. And the one I like the best is the Chief Marketing Officer at Tick Sporting Goods. And what's kind of cool about this is when you read this, it really does sound like he's thinking in the social world. And we'll look at a little example of kind of what Dix does, and they are pretty cutting edge with some of the things they do. Marketing is a combined art and science of reaching out to consumers wherever they are to tell them a story, to ignite desire, and to convert that desire into demand. So it really talks about and then gives you a sense of exactly where we're at today in uh, the social media the sort of world. Um, again, you got to have good content, as I've said before, to pull the consumer in, to be a part of the brand, to want to be a part of the brand, to share that experience with others, the whole thing. And, and I think his definition you know, hits the nail right on the um, head. Um, let me go to Delicious here, and let me pull up um, bear with me one second. Let me pull up. I don't know if they have delicious listed here, uh, but let's go there. Let's go to delicious, and I am going to find. I should have a Dick Sporting Goods store here. Story here. Uh, okay, here it is. Here, Dick's uh, Sporting Good teams up with Impact to provide concussion education. So again, Dick's has several articles out there, guys. They're they're really pretty cutting edge with using social media. This is an example of where they were using Foursquare to check in. Um, I'll let you read the details. But as a leader in retail sports, Dix helps young athletes uh, remain safe with protective gear. But as concussions become more prevalent, the company wanted to do more. That is why Dix Sporting Goods has announced the launch of the PACE program, protecting athletes through concussion education. So teaming up with Impact, the first most widely used and scientifically validated computerized concussion evaluation system, Dix through PACE will provide up to 1 million non-athletes across 
more than 3,300 middle and high schools nationwide with their first year impact test program in concussion education for free, making it the largest concussion baseline testing initiative ever created. Uh, so what did they do here? So if we read down a little further, the pro program for, uh, from now uh, through September 12th, Dix will donate a dollar to the PACE program for every pair of athletic shoes purchased in any of the 449 U.S. stores or online. In addition, it's pledged an additional one dollar for customers who click on the share button on the PACE tab via the DSG Facebook page, tweet about PACE with their hashtag, and check in at, a, at, at the uh, DSG location via Foursquare Facebook Places, uh, which of course we know no longer exists. Um, so anyway, just kind of cool. Again, trying to drive engagement, get them to check in and become a part of Facebook, and then also get them to share that and become advocates for Dix. So again, like I said, there's several other stories out there that you guys can find on Dix if you just kind of Google it. Um, uh, again, they do a lot of uh, great things along those lines. Okay, let's see. So integrated marketing. How do we find integrated marketing? Uh, it is an approach to brand communications where the different modes work together to create a seamless experience for the customer and seamless is key uh, and are presented with a similar tone and style again very key to reinforce the brand's core message so again you've got to have that similar look feel sound you know you know even down to you know the logos and, and all of that sort of stuff you got to be consistent across these channels its goal is to make all aspects of marketing communication such as advertising sales promotion public relations direct marketing personal selling online communication social media work together as a unifying force rather than permitting each to work in isolation um, which maximizes the cost effectiveness so this is where we get into the silo discussion that we've gotten into before again companies have got to even more so now than ever before break down those silos, um, you know, your your marketers have to be working across channels, communication channels, and even across platforms and devices. You, know, you just can't have somebody focusing in on mobile and somebody focusing in on applications on PC. Again, you've got to be working across the board to make sure that you've got consistency in how you're doing things. Um, again, that doesn't mean that you your app on the mobile might not serve a different purpose and they have the PC, like let's say American Airlines, um, you know, and, and we'll look at that a little bit later. But again, you've got to have kind of a consistent message and feel and, and, and those sort of things. Okay, digital marketing, kind of a subset of integrated. Okay, digital marketing is marketing that makes use of electronic devices such as computers, tablets, smartphones, cell phones, digital billboards, game consoles to engage consumers and other business partners. It is a major component of digital marketing. Uh, internet marketing is. Uh, offline techniques also that utilize online response. Okay, so it could be a a direct mail piece which is pushing you to the website for example and again just in terms of marketing in general guys we could definitely define marketing as push versus pull and let's talk about that again push marketing is the old marketing you know that's where you know in the 50s and 60s we were passively setting in front of the television sets and the marketers and the brands were just pushing out the message and the image that they wanted to portray to us and we just kind of went with it and took it and took their word for it and really bought into uh, the brand Okay, so for hundreds of years, marketers have used strategies aimed at pushing their message out to prospective customers. Success was measured by crossing their finger, hoping that the message fell on the right ears at the right time. Well, the world of marketing is changing. We said never had before the driving force behind this change includes new marketing channels such as social media and SMS texting. And then, you know, we can also say new platforms as well, which change the, changes the game also. Uh, examples of push, print, billboards, brochures, catalogs, TV and radio broadcasting. Now again, as I like to say, the lines do get a little fuzzy because again, I could look as a catalog as being pull if I again requested the catalog or, or something along those lines. Um, so again, doesn't necessarily have to be pushed, so that's where things get a little fuzzy here. On pull, again, mobile, SMS marketing, you know, you're texting, social media, Twitter, Facebook, again, it's there if we want to go to it. Um, blogs and content, another great example, the info's there, again, if we want to go to it, okay? 
Um, so with the help of social and mobile marketing, prevalent marketing trends over the past decade have evolved from primarily push strategies into poll. Uh, what does it mean? Poll marketing is about encouraging your, your prospects to seek you out because you offer them something of value. For example, that value might come in the form of an offer or simply the information from which the potential customer is looking. Remember, the customer holds the power. They choose to opt into your message regardless of the channel in which it's delivered, which means you have to make it easy for them to opt in. Okay, and I know on your homework assignment for this particular module, I'm going to be throwing out some examples and you'll be telling me whether it's, it's an example of push or pull marketing. And again, you know, gamification is another great example of pull marketing. It's gamifying something to pull the person into the brand. Um, you know, you read a story, you download a PDF, you get points. Uh, you know, you, you come to Perry's class, you tweet, you get points, you know, it, it, it's pulling you in to the conversation, basically. So gamification is another great example. And Sephora, again, is, is a beautiful example of a company that really knows how to use social media and build advocacy um, and spread uh, the word. Um, the Clue Train Manifesto, again, just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of it. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of it. Uh, then you might want to take a look at it. Uh, so I present it here because what's really kind of cool is these guys back in, I think, oh goodness, it was, let's say I got the book set in here in front of me. I think it was around, let me get the exact date set here. It was around 19, when was this first done and first published? Around uh, 19, oh shoot, I can't find the exact date here. When I, did it. I want to say around 1990 or so. Uh, when they came up with these um, 95 manifestos. Um, and again, really, really totally um, ahead of their time in terms of what they were doing. Uh, it makes me mad I can't find the exact date here on the book because I've got an updated version of this. Um, let's see, but I think it was around 1990. And they kind of foresaw what was going to be happening with the web before it even happened. And I mean, here's one of the most powerful quotes out of this book. I mean, they were very, very visionary. A powerful global conversation has begun. Through the internet, people are discovering and many new ways to share relevant knowledge with blinding speed. As a direct result, markets are getting smarter and getting smarter faster than most companies. Now you gotta realize this was said back in like 19, oh here it is, in 1999. So I'm sorry, I've got it right up here in 99. Um, so, I mean, un unbelievable that they made the statement way back before Facebook was around, Twitter was around, et cetera, and the web was still pretty much in its infancy. I mean, some of the, the manifestos that they said were markets or conversations. Uh, markets consist of human beings, not demographic sectors. These network conversations are enabling powerful new forms of social organizations and knowledge exchange to emerge. Again, you gotta realize they made all these statements way back before Facebook and social media was even present or even coined as a phrase. Companies that assume online markets are the same markets that use to watch their ads on television are kidding themselves. So again, let me read that again. Companies that assume online markets are the same markets that used to watch their ads on television are kidding themselves. It is just not the same anymore. So um, hold on one second. Just gotta take care of something here. Sorry guys, while I'm recording this, I had actually brought my little dog into the office and he was trying to go out the door and into the hallway here at the uh, university and that would not be very good. Um, okay, so I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of the um, of that manifesto. Okay, a few just a few stats. Again, 2.27 plus billion people uh, are, are basically on, on the web, and this is just kind of a breakdown of, of how that looks um, as of 2012. Okay, uh, ad spend by medium. Uh, again, just wanting you to see here. We've talked about this, you know, the first class probably, I believe. And again, this is just showing you that by 2016, I mean, mobile is, is forecasted to be a pretty big chunk of the digital spend. So make sure you guys embrace any opportunities to take mobile marketing courses 
and stay in touch with what's going on in mobile. It's, it's very, very important. Um, actual uh, ad spend by medium, again, what you see cable TV is still pretty heavy in terms of advertising spend. And the other thing I want to make sure you guys realize is, again, um, cable uh, television is targeting you guys uh, with ads. So that is definitely happening. And let me just see here. I need to find, um, I've got some other articles here I wanted to highlight for you guys. Um, on this, let me just see if I can find this here. Um, uh, shoot, I thought I had some other ones set up here I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I'm going to go to Delicious and see if we have that. Um, what do we have here? So if I click on this, again, this is just going to kind of show, talk a little bit about kind of what's, what's um, going on here. Okay, television advertising, again, takes cue from online ad. Uh, so I read a pretty interesting article over the Wall Street Journal, um, which I didn't really view as an unbiased news source, but which does have massive resources to come up with interesting articles. The article in question talked about how personal information is being used by some cable and satellite operators to target advertising to households, much like we do online advertising. The article opened uh, with an example of personal data being used to target ads. The content was prescription drugs obtained from insurance companies. First off, I have to believe that it would be illegal for them to disclose that. If not, then it should be. Uh, this is one of those things that I find at fault with the Wall Street Journal, among other problems that plague major media outlets these days, which I won't get into. Okay, uh, let's move past to his personal beliefs here. Um, so basically what they're getting into, again, is them targeting you, again, based on your viewing behavior. So that's really where we're at today. And, um, you know, what you'd realize several years ago, we were being targeted as well, but it was at a more aggregate level. So cable companies were aggregating, saying, okay, people who live in this area tend to watch these tour type of shows, so advertisers might want to target these individuals with these ads versus people who live in these areas. Again, why they were doing that initially is because they were afraid if word got out that they were allowing advertisers to target us based on our individual viewing preferences, that there would definitely be a problem there as, as one might expect. Now I know I did, um, I'm going to go back here to Delicious and go back to my account. And I know I had tagged a couple other things here with respect to television. Um, there was, oh shoot, let's see here, I've got a lot of other stuff tagged here because um, I was preparing for a presentation. Um, let's see what I've got here. Shoot, I'm going to have a hard time finding it here, it looks like. Um, but I just read, and again, I might have tweeted it out as well, about the new televisions that are pre being created. Oh, here we go here. So this is the one, my bad, guys. So it was 13 days ago, cable companies mining viewer data for targeted ads in the Huffington Post. So again, and then Google has a Trojan horse to disrupt uh, TV, really big data. So I suggest as part of your reading, you guys go back to my Delicious account and find these two articles to read as well. And it'll give you even further insight on what's happening um, today. Um, uh, even more so than the article I had posted here, which was from 2011. So these are two really recent articles. And then what we can do is we can um, engage in these in class and talk about those. Uh, let me just write that down so I don't forget uh, to, uh, to uh, list that there. Um, the other thing I know I have tweeted, let's 
something just recently, again, about the new television sets that are being created. Again, a little scary. They're all being loaded in with data to share to advertisers. Um, and I know, I have, here it is right here. So TV sets being manufactured to track what we watch for purposes of customized ads, again, on Bloomberg. So I suggest you go back to my September 9th tweet of 2013 and take a look at that one as well. So pretty eye-opening on what's going on. So again, just want you to understand, you know, and, and as television converges with the web, I mean, it makes perfect sense that this is where we're going. So again, make sure you guys stay on top of those trends. Uh, digital marketing is something you just can't click and get there. It's pretty complicated. You got to make sure you lay out a really good plan, good content strategy, um, etc. It's going to be critical. Okay, just another another uh, cool infographic I ran across again, showing how digital spend lays out. Um, okay, so let's talk um, again um, about online offline marketing compared to each other. So if we think of the focus of offline, it's obviously your product online, as I've said many times, content's king. Uh, timing, again, company determined timing in the online world is really customer need driven. Okay, um, so the customers are really in control as we've talked about. Collateral, obviously online, it's your web content, your blogs, your social media. Um, on offline, it's your mass media, your catalogs, your retail stores. The communication means, again, online obviously more digital, uh, offline not as digital. Product placement, again, in your brick and mortars, catalog positioning. Uh, online, it's gonna be you know, your search, website navigation, emails, and then what's kind of cool with emails, more emails are going, you guys all know, with HTML5, it's more possible to embed a YouTube video or a video right within the email, so you no longer have to click and go outside of the email, uh, which is going to give brands a lot more possibilities for us to interact within the email, uh, which is going to be really, really cool. Um, challenges, again, uh, you know, driving that retrial traffic, you know, making sure you got good technology, that the website's very uh, navigatable. Um, business drivers, again, number of communications uh, online, obviously, it's going to be the relevance to the customer. You've got to make sure you're relevant to that target. Digital marketing framework, and very important. Um, so let's kind of go through some of the things that define that. Again, you have to have goals. What's the business objectives of your digital footprint? Acquire customers, retain, reactivate branding. So this kind of comes back to talking about the different types of websites that are out there. At a high level, your websites are really a branding website. It's a website for, for content like your publishing websites, um, and then you also have your e-commerce websites. Okay. Um, target market, again, we need to understand who our target market is if we're going to build out an effective strategy, obviously. Offer, when I talk about that, is you got products and pricing. Make up the offer. What's the augmented product? And really what I mean by that is what is everything about the product together, including the warranty and, and the special features and things along those lines. Again, pricing, you know, how are you going to position it? How are you going to guarantee that it's the lowest price, which is really important today? Um, again, two other things that are important in the um, uh, offer is place and promotion. So again, where does the prospect engage with the company, where is the offer made, where does the consumer want to buy, what are the channels used for ongoing communications, and again, what are the preferred channels for your customers, so those things you have to think of. Again, promotion, what's required, okay, in terms of the promotion. Uh, on the creative side, again, creative presents the benefits, has a good call to action, uh, it's going to take into consideration the media and format uh, because, again, that could define the, the, the creative strategy. Includes a response channel, of course, okay? And it's going to have that solid branded component. Content strategy, again, do you have online content coming here for your ongoing content? Very important in this digital social media world, you've got to have your content calendar. So think of it as a big spreadsheet where you're laying out for every day, how many tweets are you going to do, how many Facebook posts, you know, 
what are the different type of Facebook posts you want to make sure you're doing within a week, uh, et, et cetera, to ensure you're, you're maintaining a good level of engagement all the way around. Okay, so you've got to have that strategy and then have some behaviorally triggered sort of communications also. So if a person purchase, then you need to have some sort of resell, upsell sort of strategy as well. Let's say a week later, they're going to get this promotion to try to upsell them uh, to some other add-on features, for example, or add insurance coverage or something along those lines. Media, again, what offline formats do you want to use? What online formats do you want to use? So these are some of the things um, that you guys have to decide on. Testing, very important, as I like to say, test, test, test. And in the digital world, it is so easy to test. There's no reason to make any mistakes or to guess. Uh, you could test with relatively small budget, unlike the old offline world, where if you wanted to test a promotional change or product change or price change, it was pretty pricey because you'd have to do a whole new creative letter shop, postage, production, printing. There were time delays. I mean, oh, I mean, heck, I mean, it'd be you know six months before you could get a read on anything. Uh, today, definitely not the case, and there's no excuse uh, not to have a good uh, testing strategy employed. The KPIs. We'll get into this a little heavier later. Again, uh, you know, how are you going to gauge success? Your your key performance indicators. Uh, at the end of the day, what is driving the business? What are the things you need to keep a close eye on? Just to think of driving your car. What what are the key performance indicators you look at in your car? You look at the gas gauge. You look to make sure uh, maybe it's not overheating. Um, and you know, that, that's really about it. Those are you know, there's lots of other stuff kind of going on under the hood. But you know, those are the two key things that we kind of need to keep. Keep an eye on, you know, maybe maybe also if there's enough oil in, in, in the car as well. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about there. Okay, let's talk about the four P's. You guys all know what the four P's are: product, price, place, and promotion. Now, in the digital world, there's a few new spins around these, and, and they're, they're kind of taking on some slightly new meaning. So let's just talk about those. So when we talk about place in today's world, let's get real. What are we talking about? We're talking the the, the internet, the web. Okay. Uh, price. Well, let's get real. It's all about price today. We talked about showrooming, comparison shopping, you know, with, with our mobile devices. So, you know, as, as Jeff Bezos said, you know, um, again, you, you can't just say you have to have, the, you can't just say you have the lowest price. You have to have the lowest price. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts because things can be compared. And again, if, if, if you don't, uh, maybe it's because you have some additional features. You have an extended warranty. You, you will do home setup, uh, you know, whatever the case might be. So if, if not, how are you differentiating that and making sure the customer really clearly understands that and is willing to pay extra for uh, those features? Uh, the product, again, more than ever, again, you have to have a compelling and unique value proposition. So similar to what I just talked about, for example. And promotion, again, Promotion is we just have so many more options. It's so much more complicated, right? And then this gets us into the campaign attribution issue, really understanding which promotion, which channel, which device is driving the most sales and trying to understand that whole thing. Um, a lot of other dimensions now surround or encase the program, uh, again, you could have some new four P's. I think some people call it the four C's. Um, so again, I call it kind of the new four P's of digital. So I just want you guys to know if you do go out there and Google kind of the new four P's of the digital world, uh, you will find many people have all different thoughts of this. There's nothing definitive. Um, and I'm not saying they're right or wrong and I'm only right. Uh, I'm just telling you this is, these are my four P's of the digital world. So again, if you want to get the question right in class, again, you'll pay attention to my new four P's. I'm not saying anything or that the four C's are wrong or somebody else's four P's are wrong. This is just how I view the new four P's in the digital world. And it comes down to personalization, which I think we can all appreciate. Participation, we've talked about it, peer-to-peer -peer and predictive modeling. 
So personalization, we have so many opportunities now to personalize any customer's experience in the digital world. And given technology, we have the simplest it comes down to market basket analysis. People who buy this also like this, for example. Um, or when you come back to the website, it's understanding that I knew you were there before, and I know your preferences, I knew what you were looking at before. So it's all about personalizing that experience. Participation. All comes back to having good relevant content to bring the consumer into and experience the brand and become an advocate on, on your behalf. Okay, So that's what it's all about. Peer-to-peer, -peer, again, is you being able to talk with, again, your peers, hear what they have to say through peer reviews, product reviews, uh, etc. So it's those communities which are, uh, again, driving the, the purchase decision. So I think the latest stat is only about 14% of consumers trust advertising, but about 80% trust peer reviews that are posted out there on the social channels. So totally different than where we were, you know, back in the 1950s, 1960s, or even 70s. Now this particular web page just has some interesting I'm not going to go into it on my little deck here, but again, I'm going to want you guys to do that as part of your homework and make sure you guys do. Um, go back here and um, click on these and make sure that you take a look at some of the things that went wrong out there in the social media world. For example, when McDonald's came out, let's just click and I'll just go to the first one and you guys can do the rest on your own. When I go here, McDonald's had tried to promote, if you guys remember, the McD stories. Because they wanted you to say, oh, your great experiences at McDonald's. Well, unfortunately, you started talking about your bad experiences with McDonald's, and it got out of control, and the, uh, the um, uh, promoted uh, hashtag just did not work at all. So again, you know, you, you got to be prepared and really make sure you understand your, your consumer base and how they're going to be engaging with you more important than ever, ever before. Okay. Predictive modeling, very scary story. Uh, I mean, it, it's great where we're at with data and, and using it to target and, and build predictive models, but here's the bad situation that happened a couple years ago. Target, uh, again, built a model using purchase data. So they basically were able to build a model that said, hey, if somebody starts buying this product and that product and um, you know natural products and these sort of vitamins, and, and X, Y, and Z, you know what? They're most likely pregnant, and, and we're pretty sure they're pregnant with a high likelihood. Um, so what they did was they used that model to start watching uh, individuals' purchase behavior, and then when, they, when there was a strong indication that they were going to be pregnant or have a baby, then they started sending coupons to the household. Uh, for baby products like, uh, you know, Pampers and baby food and baby formula. Well, what happened is they sent it, started sending it to the 16-year-old girl into her household. Her dad saw it and, and called up Target, I guess corporate, and said, what in the world are you doing? Send her my daughter these things as though she's pregnant. You know, that's just ridiculous. She's not pregnant. Well, unfortunately, as it turned out, she was pregnant. Uh, so, you know, great that they're able to to build the model to predict it, but I don't think this is something you want to be predicting. That's a pretty personal sort of sort of thing, and, and you don't know if the person wants to share that experience with with somebody else that's in the household. Okay, so again, you guys can read through on that if you haven't heard it. So what does it all mean, what we're talking about here? You want to wrap your digital strategies around your consumer personal preferences and desires. Again, you know, we, we want to be transparent. We want to engage with the consumer. We want the consumer to engage with us, be our advocates, you know, um, share and respond in, 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 you know, different ways than, than, than ever before. Now, the, now, this is the four C's of digital marketing that some say, again, it, it's kind of saying the same stuff I did. Again, content, very important. Communication, very important. Community, uh, again, commerce obviously produces currency. I, I don't know if that kind of belongs there as a new four C of digital marketing. Um, you know, we always have commerce. Um, but anyway, just, just want you to know there's other 
views out there of that. But again, the bottom line and all line is content is definitely king because of its value period, not because of, I'm not talking SEO from an SEO perspective, search engine optimization uh, value, which we'll get into a little bit later. Your content is your brand, it's your message to the world and your potential clients. It's what it's saying about you, it's who you are. You know, again, I've certainly branded myself. I know exactly who I am. If you look at me out there socially, you'll know exactly who I am also. I'm, I love digital marketing. I love social marketing. I have a little dog that I love. Um, you know, I lost my mom last July. And, um, you know, not that I got into how or why or what happened, but you know that, that I lost my mom last July. Um, and I'm very branded to UMSL. Before this, I was very branded to NYU, but now my loyalty is with UMSL, and, and I shifted, and now my loyalty is with, with UMSL. I'm also a big runner, and, and that's really who I am. You know, um, occasionally I'll, I'll throw out a couple other things, but I'm pretty consistent in, in who I am, and, and I try to remain that way. Um, I try to let people know what I'm doing almost every day. I, I sometimes kind of share my calendar. Oh, I'm here, I'm over there, I love coffee, I love coffees. Um, so so I, I kind of share my, my daily journal journeys sometimes. Uh, not every day, but, but sometimes. Uh, branding content, again, much more than a logo like it was in the 50s and 60s, uh, voice of your communication, you know, format, face of your crowd, uh, company, non-visual attributes as well, like your customer service support, placement on your site, forums, etc. So it's it's you know everything that goes together. Um, for that purpose. Again, already mentioned Sephora. I can't say enough about Sephora. They are a phenomenal company. They get it. They know how to engage their, their customers. They, they don't even have to have a customer service team. Uh, the customers take care of each other. They answer each other's questions. They create videos of how to use the makeup, push it out there. Now, again, Sephora does have to maintain a quality control component, so they do state that they will approve the video before they go up live. But again, customers want their videos seen. Uh, customers want to see their answers shown to others regarding questions. So it gets kind of competitive uh, to be the star advocate. Um, and they have programs like that where they kind of promote you up uh, the more you offer to the community, basically. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about content creation. So Heidi Cohen is uh, one of the top 50 bloggers in the nation. Uh, she is big on content creation and blogging, content curation. Um, and again, she is a friend of mine and works at NYU and is a prophet at NYU. She is a quick Z um, contributor and um, journalist there at Click Z, which is, as you guys know, a huge digital uh, paper in the um, online world. So let's just take a look at this um, article. She wrote seven content formats every marketer needs in 2013. Again, I'm not going to look at them in detail. I'll let you guys kind of do that on your own. The content marketing is part of 2013's marketing mantra, at least for brand marketers. Over 90% of brand marketers have or plan to have a content marketing strategy this year, according to research by Outbrain and Econs. So, seven content marketing formats for 2013. Whether you're a newbie or an experienced uh, creator, your 2013 content should include these seven formats. Again, social media, obviously. Okay, so that, that's a given. A uh, blog, you, you have to have a blog. So despite being an older form of social media, blogs supply content for social media engagement, aid search optimization, and help close and support sales. Okay, she's got another link there that you can go to if you find this particular article, 13 steps to get your blog on track. Images, you, you need to have good images. Again, we all know images are important on Facebook to get engagement. So that's why Facebook just last year increased the size of images when they're posted because they found out people engage more when the picture is bigger and let's get real at the end of the day Facebook needs to keep us engaged if they don't keep us engaged that's not a good thing then they need us to continue to come back for example uh, videos again a great way to showcase your your products and let your your customers and your employees actually be real um, so another great tool email again while not sexy 
is a workhorse. It is the most cost-effective way to retain and keep your customers engaged and coming back. And you know, I, I do think it is 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 sexy. I definitely do. And in today's new world, it is with the responsive design of emails and now the ability to embed um, animation and videos and surveys right in an email is pretty cool. So a lot of great changes I think are going to be happening there. And email marketers guys are really heavily in demand uh, without a doubt. Websites, regardless of the type of business you have, again, you've got to have a good website that lives, as we've talked about. You know, live events as well. So think about uh, showcasing live events um, to support your particular product. Let's see here. Five elements you need to support your content marketing. Again, be findable on mobile. So again, a definite, and I think we've thrown out some stats before that again, if you do not give a good mobile experience, you are going to lose the consumer with a high rate. Um, I think 60 to 70 percent of consumers say, you know, if they're not having a good experience, they'll just jump to another brand out there on the mobile device. Um, optimize content marketing for search. So again, to just make sure you're you're thinking SEO all the way around. Um, format content for easy consumption. Uh, incorporate a good call to action and have sufficient resources to create, curate, and distribute content. So again, remember you, you can certainly curate uh, content that's already out there. That's great. Uh, you can create your own. That's good as well. But again, you're going to want to have a happy mix of, of both of those. You, you can't create all new. That, that's going to be quite a heavy task. So you're going to want to have some where you're, you're basically curating it using some various tools as well. Okay. All right, so let's see here, guys. Let me go back out of here, and let's get back to the camera here. Okay, and so that is it for Chapter 2. And again, make sure you look for the homework problems uh, for that chapter, and then we will talk about those in class. Okay, hope you enjoy the chapter. Okay, bye.